So, I know our next speaker, we did our PhD together. Uh, was I was doing my PhD in robotics, he was doing his PhD in AI. So, we went together on military camps because we had, I had a 120 buggy drone and uh, it's like a ground rover. And he had a 120 flying UAV, a helicopter. And uh, so he was doing the planning for the helicopter because the, it was autonomous, like our ground rover. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, Thibaut is here now. He's PhD in AI now, so wow, it's cool. He's engineer at the, in space systems at ISAO. So the, uh, it's the middle logo, right? It's the, ins the Space Aerospace uh, Institute in, uh, in Toulouse. And he develops software, open source software for the Nanosat project, N-I-M-P-H, NIMPH, or whatever, however you pronounce it. Yeah. So, Thibaut uh, is going to present us uh, his, his topic, CubeSat subsystems, so thanks, Thibaut. Okay, thanks, uh, Red, for the introduction. <laughs> so, among you, who know is a superhero? It's, uh, it's not so bad. Actually, we are in, in France, we, we are sure that we are world famous, but just in France. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's our specificity. So I'm sorry, I will, I'm not going to present you amazing stuff about uh, how you are all doing. It's uh, really, I'm really impressed by all it's going on. I'm, I would like to present you more of feedback of uh, my, uh, like, I'm in space, in the space area for two years now in, uh, with uh, Isae. And uh, I wanted to, to make a feedback about uh, CubeSat projects we are, uh, we are doing with our students, and also of what kind of contribution we would like to do with, uh, uh, concerning uh, open source uh, with software. So, I'm just beginning. So, ISA Supero is, uh, is mainly an engineering school. We are forming future engineering for aer aeronautics mainly, but also for space. So we have a lot of, uh, of materials in, aerospace, in uh, space, for space. Just teaching, we'll say, theoretical. But we are also a lab. We are doing some research. We have engineering projects. We have a lot of facilities. We have antennas. We have clean rooms. So we have all, all the necessary to do like uh, cool projects. But we are not using open source too much for the moment. So um, we'll just jump on uh, our some CubeSat projects we are doing. So we have we we are in CubeSat for six years only. We are still learning about it. We are not uh, so don't blame us too much on what I'm going to say. So we have EntrySat. I'm just presenting a three U NanoSat here. Uh, we have EntrySat that is almost in the box, ready to launch. We have ISAT that uh, EntrySat, the, um, the goal is a RAN tree, uh, is to study a RAN tree. ISAT is mainly a telescope, is also almost ready to, to be put uh, in the box. Sorry for the mic, I'm not very good with it. Yeah, better perhaps. And the uh, NAV project with, where we are concretely just beginning. And I want to focus on these three projects. For why? About students and engineers. We officially, we say we have 30 students a year per project and around five engineers full time, helping them or supporting them with, with their main activities. Because we are also doing science with, uh, with this CubeSat, uh, hopefully, fortunately. But in reality, we are more like 15 students every six months which are not really recovering each other. So we have 15 students, they leave, we have 15 other students. So we have some communication issue between the students, uh, the, the continuity of the project. And also we don't have really four engineers full time, it's more like two, three engineers full time, and a lot of uh, staff like engineer teacher that are not full time at all, but are working a lot or not at all on the project. So it's uh, quite, uh, quite a mess on the organization, but we are, we are dealing with it, it's okay. So, be, be conscious that we are in the context of academic nanosats, so it's a still a student project, and we are convinced now that students are, are very good it's for their formation. We are not in the, in the, in the area of clubs of, of students doing CubeSat, but it's really included, these projects are included in their formation. So we are following them, we are helping them. 
And it's very important to have a good supervisor ar around uh, this kind of project. It's complex. Definitely, nanosats are complex. We were naively thinking that we, you can put like some, some, some team of students doing the CubeSat and it will work easily. It's not exactly true. Uh, so we have overbook supervisor, of course. And uh, we, have, uh, we have experts from, uh, from some agency, from Airbus, from, from Thales, that are explaining how to do that with very complex tool for our students, with, with very good intention, actually. But we lack of efficiency, clearly. So we are redoing a lot of work. Uh, we have communication issue in the team. Uh, we lack of team methodology. And uh, our students are not adapted to bureaucracy, clearly. Uh, I'm not uh, adapted to bureaucracy, so I understand them. I will not blame them for that. So, um, what I discovered about just uh, mission, it, it was um, it's, uh, on the pre-design mission phase. I will focus on the pre-design mission phase here. So we are using softwares to, to do that, to help us uh, about that. And I, I will cite some examples. Don't, don't, get, don't, uh, don't be vexed if you don't recognize your tools. It's only the software used on the three, uh, the three nanotypes I was talking about. So we are using a lot of different, uh, zut, sorry. We are using a lot of different tools for mission analysis, for ACDS, for structure, for mass budget, from loss, for radiation, link budget, dissipation budget, visualization. And all of that, it's like, it's not really in our process, it's not really standardized. We are taking part of them, we are changing the format between them, and we are redoing every, like every year, we are redoing a lot of times the same thing. So, we, we ask ourselves, how can we improve? The idea could be to have, like, uh, we just pick one soft, the best soft in each, uh, each uh, part, each module, we'll say. Uh, we are going to, to pick the best soft, and we are going to make a common database and share that. And actually, that's existing. It's not, uh, it, it's already existing. It's called, uh, what they call, it's, um, it's uh, concurrent design engineering. So, tools exist. So, for example, you know uh, OCDT from ESA, you have uh, IBM CIC from CNES, you have uh, some uh, software uh, from NASA, you have uh, even uh, labs that are developing their own uh, soft. Uh, it's an example from uh, Paris Observatory. Uh, so, that's pretty cool, but they have also limits. Uh, you, can, uh, you can read the uh, nice paper, The Dark Side of, uh, engineering, uh, of Design Engineering, uh, of, uh, of these guys. Uh, it's all, I have a problem also with these, uh, these tools. They are all heavily Excel-based. Everybody, like, they just love, the manager loves Excel, so they are all doing things with Excel. It can be nice, but it's not really open source. Uh, you have alt alternative, okay, but it's, for me, it's not the best solution for the moment. But it's true that it's practical. It's really practical. And they are also distributing that as friendly license. But it's not open source, clearly. Uh, I, I, I learned from, uh, from student uh, of uh, INSA that OCDT, there is an alternative of OCDT that is open source, uh, developed by the team doing OCDT. So I will, uh, I'm here to learn this kind of stuff, so I'm, I'm glad <laughs> about that. Uh, Concretely, we are using at ISAE Supero IDM CIC and OCDT. Uh, we are still redoing a lot of things. For example, with the version management, uh, when we, we build a model in Katia, it's not open source, sure, uh, we have to re, uh, re almost rebuild it. Each time we change something, we have a long process of re restructuring all the version of our 3D model, for example. And it's often, it's often seen as supplementary work. It's not helping as much as we want, but it's helping somehow. Uh, it's not so easy to interface with other, with existing tools. Often we have to, to manually make the thing, so manually it's not very efficient. Um, OCDT, for example, when we discover it, uh, we, we discovered that we ne need to set a network and all of that. It's not really light installation process. It's okay, it, we can manage it, but it's not, uh, it's not what we were expecting for our students. But there is progress also. They are using a lot of standards, so it's very cool. They, they are getting, um, ergonomically speaking, they are getting better, and we have a common base to work with. 
So what I want to say now, it's we keep this idea of developing this kind of uh, big, uh, big uh, concurrent design uh, uh, software uh, in idea of being open source, respecting standards. And why doing it? Because for the moment, I don't know really open, uh, open source software that is doing that. Uh, and for that, the good news is we have uh, we have uh, Nanostar. Nanostar is a European budget that is uh, partially uh, uh, um, giving us budget to do that. So it's quite an idea. It's a partnership between seven universities across Europe, and uh, mainly it's focused on formation for uh, students and for engineers on Nanosat. It's to enhance the formation on Nanosat. And uh, in our case, we. It's not only the, the goal of this project, but one of the goals is to set up a collaborative platform for, uh, for uh, and uh, to design some concurrent design facilities for, for uh, checking some, uh, for, uh, for doing some student challenge with it. So we are here right now. If you can just uh, remind you some, something of this presentation is that we want to build a software that could be open to cross-platform standardized for our needs in uh, the Studio A uh, NanoStar project, that will be the, it will be validated with the student challenges. But if the world was perfect in an idealistic world, we would like not only to do it for mission analysis, what I was focusing, but also for simulation and even operation, because we, we are seeing that for operation and simulation, for example, sometimes we are just redoing the same thing exactly with uh, tools that are not so different at our level, really in an academic point of view uh, on nanosats. Yes, I'm almost done. Uh, uh, we want to keep, uh, we, are, we know we have only one year to do that. We, we have one year, so we have a pragmatic approach. We are going to, to we need to make compromise with what's existing. We are not saying, oh, I, we get rid of, for example, the CDFs that are already existing. We are currently seeing if we are going to adapt them to our needs, but it will not be open source, so I'm not very happy with that. And uh, we want to massive reuse what has already done, but you are doing actually <laughs> quite the idea. And uh, at the end, we'll say that I'm I'm conscious that standards is one of our main focus. The data exchange between the interface of every soft is uh, really the key point for me, and uh, we want to use standards, so CCSES and uh, so on. And any advice is uh, really welcome because I'm, uh, I'm pretty new to that. And uh, it's one of the first uh, like open source project we could uh, pro propose and promote. So if you have any advice, I will take them uh, gladly. So thanks uh, for uh, listening to me. And uh, if you have any questions. Thank you. So thank you. Red has the microphone again, <laughs> and he runs away. Yeah. I'm the runner. Uh, no. <laughs> OK. Um, so I'm an aerospace engineer student, and I'm actually involved in a pocket cube project. And I really feel you when you say about, when you talk about the disorganization, the redoing, the the missing information and I, I wanted to ask you what would you say it's the maybe a, a good tip for our team to improve on all of those uh, things uh, excluding the software part which I think it's very interesting but as a from our communication and organization point of view uh, as you are saying, like communicating a lot, even whatever you choose uh, of method of uh, of working, just communicate a lot. Use uh, use um, uh, use uh, chats. Uh, use uh, whatever you like to be sure to to share information, to avoid redoing things. Really, to uh, uh, in all the process, you absolutely need to to be uh, to have a good idea of what's going on. We, we uh, for example, in our we are very we are very bad examples. So is that we were not <laughs> versioning our things. We were not uh, like uh, stocking in one uh, common uh, common uh, database all the information we get. So we lose a lot of time just uh, asking for p for students that they were already gone if they can just send us their work, things like that. It's uh, mm -hmm. we we are learning on that clearly. So um, I, I'm not 
<laughs> maybe I'm not the best to give you advice. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you make like maybe monthly reports, uh, standard report for every subsystem or? or now, you just... yes. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> now, yes. <laughs> You can take advice from Diana and Katie about metadata and organizing your data. <laughs> Another question. Right. Last year, it was mentioned in the OSCW that one of the areas that was lacking proper open source tools was like mechanical design. Yeah. Uh, what are you using for that? Antero what are your also. impressions? So, sorry? What are your impressions on that? What are you using? Uh, we, we are, uh, for the moment, we are using a proprietary software, clearly. We are using Katia, we are Katia. using uh, okay. Termica, we are using Ezatan. It's, uh, it's not, for us, it's not uh, the best solution, but we, we cannot find any other alternative. But for that, for example, for, uh, for the Termica example, it's a, well, it's a, nice, it's a nice tool, it's okay. But are we really needing so complex tool for doing uh, what we are doing with our, our NanoSat? I'm not sure. Maybe we can have like a, a very light uh, open source alternative with a very light modeling of the thermals. And we can't, for the moment, we can't find something that is not too simple, but not too complex uh, in the open source uh, community. Okay, so I think that you can find him the tall guy with long hair around <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thibaut. So, thank you. <laughs>